This is the 10th uh, tractor show that has been put on and sponsored at the Raid Homestead Farm by the Elliott Antique Tractor and Engine Association. And the event is to promote farm life and, and machinery and the heritage and to pass it on to future generations so that we don't lose it. I was born and brought up on this farm. A friend of mine convinced me that being a farm boy that I ought to go to tractor and engine shows. Well, I pretty much got hooked, but I was on the outside looking in, so I went and bought a, a little John Deere tractor and thought I'd like to restore it. Well, it is what they say is a fever. Once you do one, you, you want another one, and then you're buying parts tractors to fix the parts tractor, and uh, it all started from just one little John Deere. We used to go to shows from here to Indiana, and uh, we thought, well, why can't we do that in Maine? We didn't know if it would catch on or not at all, so the first year we had, uh, I think, 27 tractors and probably 50 engines. The 1949 Case DC. Looks like he's hooked up and headed out. First year we pulled in front of the Red Barn over there and we had such a heck of a time that it just mushroomed from there. And it is what it is today. I, I don't get involved, you know. There's a lot of competition there. Even though we only pull for bragging rights, people will really get into it. There you go, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, Paul, good job. Come on, come on, come on. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, right there. We just pull a lawn and garden. As soon as my boy's old enough, we'll get into the big stuff. What we do is just bragging rights. Mine can out pull yours. So the next guy that takes it home, tinkers a little bit here and there, and comes back the next day and does better, hopefully. <laughs> it's tractors, it's engines. We like to have a good mix of everything. We've really tried to promote to keep the engines alive because those were part of the earlier technology. I brought down my collection of Hercules engines. Hercules manufactured under five different brands, and I have four of the five major brands that they sold under. Rather than all different sizes, I decided on all the same bore and stroke but all painted different colors, sold by different companies. Saxon is probably the oldest of all of them that I have. It's uh, 1918. That was sold by the Brackett, Shaw & Lunt Company uh, of Summersworth, New Hampshire, and Boston, Mass. And they, like Sears and Roebuck, built nothing. They marketed everybody else's equipment under their house brand. The pride of the fleet is my Hercules, which was made around 1920, and they like to retain the nice smooth hopper lines and uh, just the neat appearance of the blocks. I think probably Saxon bought Hercules rather than off-brands so that they could also get that nice smooth looking block. I, I think I'm a perfect example of why a show like this goes on because I didn't have a clue that any of this stuff even existed like the old engines and stuff and a lot of people they go through and they pull these things out and restore them that would just be lost. And so you have a lot of history that people would never even hardly know about, much less get to see and look at. It's a uh, 1900, it's 105 years old, 12 foot power aeromotor. And it's one of two that we presently know of running in the country. Originally, we were told that it, it sawed firewood way, way back. Unfortunately, we can't talk to them fellows. I wish we could. Along with the gasoline engine, this is a very big part of our heritage. It's the other half. But the windmill, not this particular one, but ones just like it, is still in operation all over the, uh, the Midwest, the whole country. People think that necessity is the motherhood of all invention. That's baloney, it's laziness. Give a lazy man a hard job, he only always finds an easy way to do it. And years ago, this is how people used to get water in their house. First off, people carried water by hand. That's very hard. Then somebody decided that they had a hand pump, that was easier. And then the lazy man said, well, if we have a hand pump, why don't we put a pulley on it and a motor and make it even easier yet? So it's always the lazy man that makes the easy job out of it. 
wife and I started this along with another couple 10 years ago, uh, not really thinking that it was going to amount to this. And I think that this is something that my parents would look back on and, and really appreciate what we've done here.